These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Do you remember the concept of electronegativity? Um, do you know which of these yes. two compounds would be more electronegative? So, do you know which of those two elements is more electronegative? Sorry. So, let's talk about that. Okay. So, um, electronegativity is a measure of how much the element wants to gain electrons. Uh, in fact, that's, that's what all of chemistry um, is about. Chemistry is just about trading electrons. Um, all chemical reactions are based on one element giving electrons to another element or sharing electrons with another element. So we have to ask um, how, how badly does the element want the electrons? So So an element that is more electronegative, that's just really a way of saying that the element wants electrons more. So if I say one element is more electronegative than something else, that means it wants the electrons more. Um, it doesn't mean that it has a negative charge. This is actually not a very good term, because uh, this doesn't mean a negative or a positive charge. Where, where does this term come from? Well, they're using negative here in the term, I guess, of lacking. Right? Uh, if you say something is negative, that kind of means lacking. And if you say positive, you mean that it has too much of something. So when they say that something is electronegative, what they really mean is that it's electron lacking. More electronegative means more electron lacking. Well, that would uh, translate into wanting more electrons. So it doesn't mean that it actually has the negative charge. Uh, in fact, if anything, maybe it means the opposite, but it means it doesn't have enough electrons. So something that's more electro uh, electronegative means that it wants electrons more. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, I, uh, to how familiar are you with the periodic table? Um, do you know which element this is? Hydrogen. Good. And how about this one? Uh, no, I, um, noble gases are here, but uh, helium, HP. Yep, that's right. Okay. Any idea what this one is? Yeah, I think sodium is down here, but that's the right column. So this one would be lithium. Okay, very good. So that would give us this. Okay, so let's think, say, about hydrogen. So here's the symbol for hydrogen. Um, do you know how many protons does hydrogen have? One. That's right. And how many electrons does it have, right? Now, it would have one electron if it was neutral, which is what we normally assume. Um, it could lose one electron. If it loses an electron, it would become H+. Plus. So that would make it positive, and this is what's now called an ion. So something that's got a charge is called an ion. Do you know what the name of a positive ion is? There's a special name for positive ions. Those are called cations. Okay. okay. So this would be a hydrogen that has lost its one electron. If it loses the one electron, then it has a positive charge. It would be a hydrogen cation. On the other hand, um, we could have this hydrogen gain one electron. The hydrogen could gain an electron, and then it would have a negative charge, because then it would have two electrons. So this would make this a negative ion. Um, well, this is the term for a positive ion, cation. Do you know what the term is for negative ions? Yeah, that's right. Those are used a lot in chemistry, those terms, cation and anion. They're easy for me to remember because the T here looks like a plus. So you can say this is A positive ion. So a cation is A positive ion. And the N here could stand for negative. So this is A negative ion. So those are two terms that we'll use quite a bit. So um, even though hydrogen has one proton, it doesn't always have to have one electron because it could gain one or lose one. Um, how many protons does helium have? Eight. 
Yeah, how many protons does helium have? What, what, what was your guess? Because it's novel gas, so all the uh, last layers is filled already, so I would say eight. Right, oh, so let's talk about that a little. And let's look at the periodic table. Do you have any periodic tables with you? Maybe I'll lend you my book. So. Okay, so here's our periodic table. Um, and you can see that each of these has a number. One, two for helium, three for lithium, four for beryllium, five for boron, six for carbon. So above each of the elements, there's the number. And this is what's called the atomic number of the element. And the atomic number tells you how many protons that element has. Uh, so that's the number that is above the element in the periodic table, at least in that periodic table. Um, so that would be how, if you didn't remember that hydrogen had one proton, you could look it up in the table, and you would see it has the number one. Um, so even though that's called the atomic number, maybe it would be better to call it the proton number, because that's what it really tells us. So this number tells us the number of protons. So that means that helium must have two protons. That's right. So it does really have two protons. So in that case, how many electrons would it neutral? That's right. So this also has two electrons. Now what was confusing to you is that you were saying, gee, I thought that the things in this column have eight electrons. But that's only true um, for after the first row. You can kind of see how the, 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 these rows are different from the first row in the periodic table. You can see how hydrogen and helium are, there's only two elements in the first row. Whereas, how, well, yeah, let's put it this way. How many elements are there in the first row? One, two. But how many elements are there in the second row? Go ahead and count. If we count all of these, how many elements would that be total? Two and four. Go ahead and use the table. It's three and ten. Uh, oh, yeah. So I meant uh, how many uh, columns in the second row by itself? So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight columns total in that row. That's where I think we're coming up with the number eight. It's true that this element here has eight outer electrons, because there's eight columns here. But that wasn't true for the first row. The first row only had two columns. Um, so OK, so hydrogen and helium are a little bit different from the other ones. OK, so yeah, we should try to, uh, to work that out carefully. So we can always tell how many protons something has from the atomic number. And then we would know how many electrons it would have if it were neutral, because um, that would be the same number. So by the same token, how many protons does lithium have? Three. So if it's neutral, it has three electrons. So how many protons does aluminum have? Is it in three? Can I click on that? Yeah, good, yeah, please go ahead. So yeah, I don't expect to have that memorized. Fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. I'm um, sorry? Fifteen. Thirteen, yeah. Thirteen protons total. 13 protons because its atomic number is 13. So the neutral aluminum would also have 13 electrons. OK. What's, uh, maybe we should say um, a little bit more. So um, suppose that we had aluminum plus. Uh, remember, this is called an aluminum cation. Uh, how many protons would this have? Twelve. How many protons? Twelve. And how many electrons? Thirteen. Oh, no. Twelve. Oh, okay. Thirteen protons and twelve electrons. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So when we make it, so when you make something charged, theoretically you could do it by changing the number of protons or changing the number of electrons. Mm -hmm. But what we actually do in chemistry, remember, is move the electrons around. In chemistry, we don't move protons around. We only move the electrons around. So if I want to make this charge, I'm not going to do it by removing a proton, but by removing an electron. Uh, and now you can see this has one more positive charge than here. Maybe we should review a little bit about the structure of the atom. So we know that the atom has um, a nucleus and then the outer portion of the atom. Do you remember what particles are there inside the nucleus? And what particles outside the nucleus? Right. I'll make sure this is dots. So the electrons are outside of the nucleus. By the way, there is one other type of particle that's in the nucleus besides the protons. Do you know what else? Neutrons. 
Yeah, neutrons. I don't think we need to talk too much about neutrons right now because they're not as important for the, the reactivity. But inside the nucleus, there's the protons and the neutrons. And outside, there's the electrons. Now, this is why, um, this is why it's easier to change the number of electrons than protons. It's easy to reach in and grab an electron from the outskirts of the atom. Or it's easy to add another electron to the outskirts. But the nucleus is buried deep inside the atom. So it's very difficult to change the nucleus um, of the atom. So again, chemical reactions are reactions that change the electrons in, uh, on the outside of the atom. If we were going to change the protons inside, that would be called um, a nuclear reaction. Well, obviously, nuclear reactions are much more difficult than chemical reactions.